morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John Evangelist Church in the parish of Bay Roberts Police Point. So glad you could all be here to worship with us today. A special welcome to anyone who may be visiting with us this morning. Our opening hymn is hymn number one, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion unto our God, for he will richly pardon. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by His infinite goodness and mercy. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say it together to Jubilati on page 49. Be joyful in the Lord, all your lands. Serve, Serve the Lord with gladness and come Amen. before his presence Amen. with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. God rules over all the earth. Oh, come, let us worship. Please be seated for proclamation of the word. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Hosea died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled in the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now this, that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your skin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send for me. The word of the Lord. The psalm is on page 738, Psalm 29. We will read the psalm responsibly by verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord with the The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is voice of strength. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. 
the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He may kill us, like a cat, and our God. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord the the And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory. The Lord sits on the throne of the Father. The Lord sits on the throne of the King forever. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. And together, God, God of mystery and power, open our eyes to the flame of your love, and open our ears to the thunder of your justice, that we may receive your gifts of blessing and peace to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Gradual hymn is number 439, 3 in 1 and 1 in 3, number 439.
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That it was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. And he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs except from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after growing old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows and the bird chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into the kingdom of heaven except the one who descended from the heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so too must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world would be saved through him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is 
is what he did yesterday at the Fish and Blues breakfast. I bet most people didn't even see him there, did you? He was quietly set up on the stage. <laughs> Nobody knew he was even there. So when you take him home, I want you to show Hope Bear how you show love to people. Okay? Show them how you show love. And write it in their book. And bring it back. And next week, hopefully, he can go home with someone else. Okay? Yes, next week is our Say Yes to Kids Sunday. <clears throat> and Say Yes to Kids is campaigned by the Anakin Foundation of Canada. And they're trying to raise money for children's and youth ministry. So next week, we're going to talk a lot about that. And we're going to encourage everybody to bring all your money. And don't even just say yes for kids. Because youth ministry is very important. But we need money to fund that. So all these big... All these grown-up people, they got money in their bank accounts and in their pockets, so they need to bring their money so we can support teaching you guys about Jesus and how much God loves us, right? Yeah, so I'm going to give you this, and you get to take all that home, but I kind of say a prayer with you first. Okay, well, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as Blair and Hope Bear go out into the world, help us, dear Lord, to show them how much love is in the world. Help them to be your hands and your feet as they spread your love for everyone they meet. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Is there Sunday school this morning? Yeah? Okay, so you can get to go and learn more about Jesus and how much he loves you. Okay? Okay. Have fun. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, for strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. So do you know how much God loves you? That's the big question. We always talk about God's love, but do you know how much God loves you? How much of our day, how much in our run of a day do we actually stop to think about that? I dare to guess, probably very little. I know we often wake up in the morning with all the distractions of our lives running through our heads. What will we have for breakfast? What will we wear? Oh, the car broke, I need to take it to the garage. Oh, how are the kids today? How are the grandkids today? I hope everyone is all right. I get paid this week. What do I need at the store? Did I make a list? Price of living is so much. Why don't someone do something about that? And all of these thoughts go through our heads. And often we don't think about how much God really loves us. Our thoughts, our thoughts are kind of like in overdrive. Pumping out thoughts after thoughts after thoughts. And keeping us distracted from that biggest reality of life. Like how much God really does love us. The Gospel writer recorded these words from Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. John 3.16 is probably the one of the best known Bible verses that there is. I've seen it on t-shirts, on posters, on Facebook posts. And it gives us that sense of peace and reassurance for what's to come after our earthly life ends. But as wonderful as eternal life is, I don't believe that that's the only reason that Jesus came to earth. His presence also has implications for our lives now. And that's why I believe the next verse that follows tree 16 is such great importance. Jesus also said, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That the world might be saved through him. I often think that Jesus tried to save us from ourselves, 
from the things that we, the thoughts and everything that we get wrapped up in in our heads. So I believe so much of that verse is about life now. God does not just want us to provide us with life in heaven for those who believe in him. But he wants us to find delight and joy in the lives that we live right now while we're here on earth. And all that's in heaven and the earth was created by God. And all belongs to God. God finds joy in the fish and the puppies and the mosquitoes and the whales and the dandelions and the great maple trees. All have been skillfully designed and created by God for his delight, for his joy. But isn't it wonderful that he also taught to create you and me? And he also longs to have a relationship with us. On this Trinity Sunday, we recognize in many ways that God has been and continues to be involved in the world. First, in creation, God molded and formed all of creation, from the tiniest speck of dust in the interstellar space to the vast expanse of the universes and all that's in it. All of it was created by God the Father. And as humans, we are still trying to grasp and to get an understanding of how it all works. Our knowledge of creation is just a small drop in the bucket. And I don't expect we'll ever come close to understanding all of God's creation or how his hand is still at work in the unfolding evolution of all that is. But God's love for his creation is so immense that he sent his son into the world, not to condemn it, but to save it. Jesus said that that's how to live a fully human life, to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. The first and the second commandments are guidelines for us to use to shape our words and our actions. Loving God guides us in loving what God loves. It shapes our thoughts and our words and our actions. And we're less about ourselves and more about wanting God's will to be done in this beautiful world. God's words as recorded in the Gospels come to life in our lives when we put this into practice. We practice being the way of love in the world. God taught us, or Jesus I should say, taught us how to love, how to forgive, how to share our resources, how to accept those who are flawed, because really we're all flawed. And to welcome the stranger into our midst. The word is alive and lived out in our lives. The Father and the Son's love for us is so intense that we are continually being invited into a relationship with the living Christ through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is often that forgotten member of the Trinity. We see God's creation. We read and we hear the words of Jesus. But the Holy Spirit is not as tangible and can often leave us in that state of bewilderment and loss. The Holy Spirit is surrounded by mystery. And we may very well be our whole life just trying to grasp even the slightest glimpse of the helper who Jesus sent to be with us. In a reflection on the passage of scripture that I just read, Jake Olmsby commented on the conversation that took place between Jesus and Nicodemus. He said, Jesus says that a life born from above is a wind-blown life. He says the wind blows where it chooses. And you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. 
God stirs within us invisibly. And God's movements impact this visible world through us. The gospel gives us visible examples of wind-blown lives. The Gerasene demonic was restored to his right mind after living years naked among the tombs. Or that woman of ill repute who was set free from the power of, and she loved Jesus so much that he, she washed his feet with her tears. Or a woman who stood stand and tall, straight after years of being bent over with a crooked back. Or the lepers who returned home to their families. Or Lazarus who was blinking in the sun after emerging from his tomb. Paul says that lives like these bear the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Wind-blown lives embody the love that is only God's to give. And we impact the world with that same love. There's always been compassion in the world. I don't doubt that. But in the world, compassion flows towards those who deserve it. God's compassion flows through us to those who need it. Deserving has nothing to do with it. We feed the hungry because they're hungry. We shelter the homeless because they're homeless. We clothe the naked because they have no clothes. And that is the lesson of the cross. On the cross, God's love flowed to those who need it, not to those who deserve it. So on this Trinity Sunday, may we take a few moments to just sit in silence and to ponder the mystery of God who made us, to the Son who redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who strengthens us and guides us all in the works that he calls us to do in loving this beautiful world he created. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we say together the words of here, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Our intercessions can be found. Our intercessions can be found on page 123. Let us kneel as we pray.
I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering, for our Bishop Samuel, for all ministers and people. We pray for the church. Almighty and everlasting God, by your spirit, the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in our vocation and ministry we may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Remember, especially where there's places of unrest in the world today. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace. And God, with your wisdom, those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that justice and peace may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison, we pray for those in any need or trouble. We pray for God's healing grace and mercy for Robin, Ella, Alan, Alan, Francis, Liz, Fred, Doris, Fred, Devin, Jim, Dwayne, Grayson, Goldie. And we pray for all who are recovering from surgeries or accidents, struggles with mental health or addictions, suffering from pain and injuries, taking treatment or medication, or experiencing declining health due to age and disease. We also pray for those that we name out loud or the silence of our hearts. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow and the strength of all who suffer, hear the cry of those in misery and need. In their affliction, show them your mercy. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask your prayers for the mission of the church. Pray for the coming of God's kingdom among all nations and peoples. We especially ask God to guide us in fulfilling our plans for our set sails and strategic goals and may he continue to guide us in this parish and in this diocese. O oh Lord our God, you have made all races and nations to be one family and you sent your holy, your son Jesus Christ to proclaim the good news of salvation to all people. Pour out your spirit on the whole creation. Bring the nations of the world into your fellowship and hasten the coming of your kingdom. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We ask your prayers for those who have died in the peace of Christ and for those whose faith is known to God alone. Pray that God may be glorified in all of his saints. Remembering especially today, Ed Bradbury and Marina's brother. Oh God, the giver of eternal life, 
We give you thanks and praise for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all your saints. Grant to us and to all who have died in the hope of the resurrection a share in the victory of, your, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fullness of joy in the fellowship of all your saints. And all this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks to Almighty God for all his goodness. You are worthy, O Lord God, to receive glory and honor and power. You are worthy to receive blessing and praise, now and forever. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 184, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, page one, number 184.
and let us pray. Living God, we saw, receive all we offer you this day. Grant that hearing your word and responding to your spirit, we may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. you through your word and Holy Spirit. You created all things. You revealed your salvation to all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory, that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the world is now too dangerous and too beautiful for anything but love. Anoint your eyes so that you may see God in everyone. Anoint your ears so you may hear the cry of the poor. Anoint your lips so you speak nothing but the truth in love. Anoint your hands so that everything you give and everything you receive becomes a sacrament. Anoint your feet so you run to those who need you. And may your heart be so opened, so set free, that your love changes everything. Amen. Just a couple of things to bring your attention to before you all go home. It's all written in the bulletin, but for anyone who's joining online, uh, thank you to everyone who assisted with the breakfast yesterday. It was a great success. We uh, fed lots of hungry people, so thank you to everyone who uh, came and had breakfast and also to all those who helped uh, make sure that everything ran smoothly. Um, Father's Day Memorial Deadlines is next Sunday, so if you want to... Next Sunday? No, June 9th. That's not next Sunday, is it? No, I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, June the 9th is the Father's Day Memorial Deadline. And... Uh, we're doing a Bible study right now on Tuesday afternoons from 1.30 to 3. It's at St. Matthew's Church. So uh, anybody who's welcome, anybody who wants to come are welcome. Uh, if you want to let us know ahead of time, it helps to ensure we have enough copies of the study. Or otherwise, you can just show up if it's a last minute thing. That's fine. Well, everyone is welcome. And uh, as I said, when my head Blair up here, next week is our Say Yes to Kids Sunday, which we're trying to... Uh, promote the support of uh, children's ministry in across Canada through the Anakin Foundation of Canada. So please uh, donate generously, come along next week, uh, take part in the worship, and be able to support the uh, financial support of the donation for the Say Yes to Kids campaign. And this year, our diocese is taking part in that also because we have a lot of diocesan ministries that take place. And a lot of the donations are going to come back to our own diocese. So it's very important that we support them, plus the people who are across Canada who need our help. So any birthdays uh, today or this week? No, continue. I know Karen got one on the 30th. That's next Friday, is it? Yeah. Friday or Thursday? Thursday. Thursday, Karen has a birthday. Any other birthdays? Maybe we can sing Happy Birthday to Karen and anybody who might be joining that line. May 
happy anniversary twice, Eleanor, because we'll get you again next Sunday, but I hope that you have a great week, yeah? And happy anniversary to you, Clarence. Just in case, who knows, some of us might not be here next Sunday. We never know. Okay, our closing hymn is 802. I hope this built on nothing less, number 802. Mm -hmm. 